devices down, please. Hello, good morning, and welcome to ESPN First Take. I'm your moderator, Jay Crawford, with the best seat in the house. Sitting between Skip Bayless on my left is Wait, I have the best seat now. I do. Between Since you I two. rule this roost, <laughs> you'd like to think that. Is your hand okay? You were injured. Don't leave me I hang it. I, I, I had to ice it. Hey, put it hey. Nice. I'm trying not to hurt your hand. No, thank you. All right? I'm trying to grab it all like you all tough and all that stuff with your double-breasted jacket on. We'll talk about that another time. <laughs> you know so 1990. You wish you had Let's it. move on. So 2020 is what it is. Come the man to my right, yeah. in case you didn't know, is Stephen A. Smith. Well, I'm going to go with GQ someday. You mark my words. Are you ready? It's going to happen. I'm always there. Speaking of GQ, Jay. That's a great place to start. Let's embrace the debate, shall we? First up on first date, Quinn's comments on Tim Tebow in an interview granted three months ago to GQ, just published though, he had some very interesting things to say about the Broncos quarterback. Mike Silver, by the way, is the author of this piece. He says, if you look at it as a whole, there's a lot of things that just don't seem very humble to me, talking about the quarterback of the Denver Broncos, Tim Tebow. When I get that opportunity, I'll continue to lead, not necessarily by trying to get in front of the camera and praying, but by praying with my teammates, you know? Now, Quinn wasted no time in posting an immediate retraction slash apology on his Twitter page. The comments attributed to me in a recent magazine article are in no way reflective of my opinion of Tim and the Broncos. Tim deserves a lot of credit for our success, and I'm happy for him and what he accomplished. Most importantly, he continues, he is a great teammate. That interview was conducted three months ago, and the resulting story was a completely inaccurate portrayal of my comments. I have addressed my disappointment with the writer and have reached out to Tim to clear this up. I apologize to anyone who feels I was trying to take anything away from our team's or Tim's success this season. Skip Bayless, Jay Croft, what do you make of this? Stephen A. Smith, I make of this that I believe that Brady Quinn did tell Mike Silver some positive things, some good things about Tim Tebow that did not wind up in the GQ article. I believe that Brady Quinn felt genuinely bad about that because he genuinely likes a lot about Tim Tebow. So he reached out, he apologized by Twitter and directly to Tim Tebow. But I also believe that when this interview was conducted, as you said, Jay, three-ish months ago, right. in the heat of battle in December, when even Denver Bronco coaches were leading Brady Quinn to believe he was one play, one series away from replacing Tim Tebow, reinforcing all these same views that Brady Quinn said exactly what got quoted in GQ, that he was quoted accurately, maybe out of context because yeah. the positive... I don't think he was claiming that he was no, misquoted. He never did. It, I think that just that. mischaracterization of his words. And as Mike Silver said earlier today on Mike and Mike, some in the Broncos organization view... Uh, share these negative views about Tim Tebow. The quote's about, I wish I had a billboard, a lot of luck was involved, and then the quote we're about to get to, the most potent quote, the one about, I won't be praying in front of the camera, right. said Brady Quinn. Mm -hmm. And because so many in the organization share those same negative views of Tebow, I, I hark back to, it was Mike Silver who reported in August on Yahoo that some in the Bronco organization said that Tim Tebow had really been demoted to fourth string because even Adam Weber, according to John Elway and John Fox, had a better future with the Broncos than Tim Tebow did. So here's my bottom line to this whole mess. As I said, for six months, Tim Tebow is playing in a viper pit in Denver. Tim Tebow is playing for an organization, for a Fox and an Elway, who badly wanted him to fail quickly last year. And Brady Quinn knew that in his heart of hearts, and that's basically what he was expressing in this article. You had me until the last part. We don't agree on the last part, because what Brady Quinn knew were a couple of things. Brady Quinn knew that Tim Tebow wasn't that good as a quarterback. Brady Quinn knew that he deserved to be ahead of Tim Tebow as a quarterback. Brady Quinn knew that a popularity contest ultimately is what elevated Tim Tebow to that stature. Oh, excuse me, this is what he's saying. We're talking about his feelings here. This is not about what you believe about Tebow. This is about what the Denver Broncos believe. That's the subject matter here. They believe that this dude wasn't good enough that a popularity contest is what elevated to that which is, yes, yeah. which
Lynch is where the viper pit analogy that you brought up comes into play. Because what happens is, is that what we're learning is what I've been saying all along, J. Crow. <laughs> Which is? Which is that nobody believed in this dude. I've been and saying that for six months. No, 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 no. You said they didn't like him. You said they wanted they him to fail. They you said they, they wanted, don't lie. You said they wanted him to fail. Yes. That is entirely different than what I said. I say he can't throw. They know it, and as a result, they just wanted it over with. The fact that this dude was able to pull off miracles in the fourth quarter made them nauseous. I'll give you that. There's no, there's no question about it. it made them nauseous. Well, he pulled off a lot of miracles. Listen, listen, listen. listen. And, 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 you know, miracle is the appropriate word. Because considering how awful he looked for 45 to 53 minutes, don't even give me that. We're not talking I, about How do you pull off multiple miracles? Oh, excuse me. Multiple miracles? I, 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 just, I just let you talk. Zip it. The point that I'm trying to make you Mr. Skip Bayless. Real Skip Bayless. You know, the Tebow, the, the, the Tebow, the Tebow support extraordinaire is that all this does is validate what I've been saying all year long. They don't believe in him because they don't believe he's worth being believed in. And as a result of that, they are resentful of the popularity contest that elevated him to a starting quarterback's role in the NFL. You have to remember, you and I only get to see him on Sundays or the Monday night game. They watch him in practice. I told they watch you before him. he's a terrible practice. That's not player. fair, but what I'm saying to you is this. I'm not, I, I acknowledge that you admitted that. But what you have to be fair about for a change to somebody whose last name ain't Tebow, okay, is the fact that guys that are on that field where practice determines their jobs, their future, their stature in the game, they have every right to be resentful of a person that has been elevated to the position that he's been elevated in despite the fact that he is poor in practice. They don't have that luxury. If they're awful in practice, they never see the light of day. He's awful in practice, but you know what? Let him sprinkle on you and you too shall be healed. And all of a sudden, he could be a starting quarterback in the NFL. It's divine intervention. That no, you what I'm saying to you is, yeah, part of it is divine intervention. I think none of it is. No, no, I'm just talking about, you know what, to have that kind of walk. That's all I mean by that. I'm speaking walk. Right? All I'm saying to you is that these they guys, these guys, these guys, these guys, I keep trying to tell you, you and I have different arguments. You keep trying to change my argument to your argument. I'm sticking with mine. It should have never. Fallacious. It should have never. Fallacious. It should have never gotten to the point where he was given the opportunity because he was so god awful in practice. Had that been anybody else, he they won. They got. Then what happened? And that's what this. What saying. happened when he that's got not, a chance? That's not the point. Oh. That's not the point. I still believe he's terrible. But the point that I'm trying to make to you is shouldn't even got to that point. If anybody else was that bad in practice as you admit he was, they wouldn't have got. They would not have seen the light of day. Why he get the chance? Huh? Why did he get it? If they were awful in practice, if he was awful in practice like you said, why he get that chance? How did somebody so awful sweep the AFC West on the road and win the division? So I got to answer your question, but you don't get to answer mine. I asked you a simple question. How is it? The man was awful in practice. How do you get the opportunity to be in his position when anybody else who's that awful in practice would not have gotten that opportunity? Because can you answer that question? This regime had invested a first-round draft choice in Tim Tebow. So John Elway finally said, let's get this over with. We are one in four. No, 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 no. One in four. You're, you're answering it from a literal perspective. I'm saying... Also, oh, you want me to no, answer, no, but no, you don't no, like my answer? No, no, no. no I'm no, not going to no, answer no, your no, answer. That's not what I mean. That's not what I mean, Skip. What I'm saying... Is, is that we know why it happened. But the point that I'm trying to make to you is if you're going to hold other folks accountable if they're awful in practice, they don't deserve the opportunity. Don't sit up here and say Tim Tebow deserved it. Say he made the most of it. But don't act like he deserved it because that's at the heart of the player resentment towards him. The quiz of the world is not all the players are there. But, but you can understand point. why there would that's be some on the you roster. You can understand that? But we're not Orton, 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 Orton lovers. And even the Brady Quinn line. Let me skip to, 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 to Stephen A's point. point. Let me see if I can help you with this. To Stephen A's point, you're talking about a man who was reportedly fourth, who leapfrogged everybody to the starting role. If you're one of the players that had been yeah. leapfrogged, and you're playing well in practice, and you're seeing Tim Tebow stink it up in practice, Absolutely. you can understand why there would be resentment and questions. Wait a minute, what happened to me? That's okay. all. He just went That's over all I'm saying. Okay, who had the most credentials coming out of college? 
of those portal well, points. Yeah. yeah. Wait a minute. If that matters, then I'll be fine. We saw him do it in the national championship game in the 